Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to talk about infections. In fact, we are initiating a series on infections in the female reproductive system. In very first video, we will talk about a very basically, very frequently asked a question that is of vaginitis. Now, before understanding the vaginitis, we need to see uh, or understand the environment in vagina. The vagina is lined by stratified squamous epithelium SSE and the cervix is lined by columnar epithelium so this epithelium changes into columnar SSE changes into columnar epithelium it's called transition zone or transformation zone okay so first of all we need to understand what is SSE Stratified squamous epithelium, whenever is, is this epithelium is present in the body at any part, then it is a very tough kind of epithelium, comparatively tough epithelium. And whenever there is a friction in any part of the body, this epithelium will be there. When this epithelium is keratinized, it becomes skin keratinized squamous cell epithelium it generally becomes the skin SSE is a very tough and also uh, very hard to penetrate for organisms that's why the skin is a very toughest epithelium of the body nobody even viruses cannot directly enter into the skin so, for the example like this, this is a tire of motor vehicle habituated for friction. Then this kind of epithelium is there even in vagina. This also uh, can be seen as a rugosity of the vagina. So, whenever there is SSE, you will find that this, yes, this epithelium is very hard to penetrate for the organisms. So, comparatively safe for the infection. But when this epithelium changes into columnar epithelium, the columnar epithelium is not very very secure for the organisms. So many organisms directly penetrate this epithelium. So gonococci, which are a very infectious bacteria, cannot infect squamous cell epithelium. That's why gonococcal vaginitis is not, not, not seen. It's very rare. Again, in the vagina, there is a special, a special kind of protection system with the infection with having normal flora of lactobacilli. The name of the lactobacilli comes from what? Whenever there is a, a estrogen in the body, it will make particular cells in the vagina and they will have abundant amount of glycogen in their cytoplasm. So this glycogen will be converted into lactic acid by this anaerobic bacteria that is lactobacilli. And because of this lactic acid, the, their pH will be acidic or around 4.5. So vaginal epithelium is ap acidic epithelium. And that's why it's again also becomes resistance to other patholo pathologic organisms. And because of abundant amount of lactobacilli and acidic environment, the vagina is comparatively very, very resistant for any infection. But again, you need to consider one thing also that yes, this kind of environment is only possible in the estrogenic state. So whenever there is a estrogen in the body, the vagina becomes protective. For example, in the follicular phase, in the luteal phase, the vagina is protective. But once the menstruation starts, because of the decrease in the estrogen and the blood flow, the acidic environment changes into the alkaline and that's why they are more prone for infections. So this period of menstruation, it's a prone to have uh, infections. So again, whenever there is no estrogen, it happens before puberty and after menopause. Again, the vaginal environmental 
environment is changed the dordelin bacteria will be lost alkaline ph will be there and they are prone to infections and so what we do the treatment for this uh, let's say post menopausal vaginitis we give them them estrogenic cream okay so now uh, traditionally the vaginal infections are described as three basic infection bacterial infection fungal infection and parasitic infections bacterial infection is bacterial vagina vaginosis bacterial vaginosis the fungal infection <clears throat> is is also very common and the candidiasis is the organism which do candida is the organism which makes most of the fungal infections parasitic like trichomonas vaginalis the name itself given trichomonas vaginalis why because it has a very very common infection <coughs> for uh, into vagina so let's talk this three infections in comparison because it will enhance your learning experience and these infections are just asked as it is so it's very important to learn it's very simple let's start with the bacterial vaginosis candidiasis and trichomonas vaginitis the organism in bacterial vaginosis is most of the organism is gardnerella vaginalis it can be have cocobacilli lactobacilli multiple bacteria are involved in bacterial vaginosis not a single bacteria is involved but the most common is what gardnerella vaginalis if we talk about candidiasis the candida albicans species is very common and here you also know you already know trichomonas vaginalis a flagellate protozoa is a cause for infection this uh, bacterial vaginosis is the most common vaginitis in the women and when there is a estrogenic state the most common vaginitis becomes candida albicans because it's the only fungal infection who can survive in this acid environment where the ph will be less than 4.5 but this gardnerella vaginalis and trichomonas vaginalis only can occur in alkaline comparatively alkaline acidic uh, alkaline ph of the vagina that is more than 4.5 ph more than 4.5 this two infection has vaginal infection or uh, vaginal ph more than 4.5 except candida which is the ph is less than 4.5 that is acidic ph now this is the very very important line that the clinical feature the type of vaginal discharge and this is very important also and clinically relevant also when you see or when you examine the vagina you need to see or differentiate those discharges and according to them you give treatment directly because again once again investigation has a very less uh, scope in this uh, disease for example we don't investigate each and every vaginitis but what we do we directly do symptomatic syndromic treatment that means we directly prescribe the medicines just seeing on the clinical features so it's very important to identify the particular discharge if you talk about bacterial vagina bacterial vaginosis again the name is vagina not vaginitis you remember bacterial vaginosis it's not bacterial vaginitis why we are using this different name like bacterial vaginosis because actually it's there is no infection or oh, sorry there is no inflammation in such in bacterial vaginosis the organism is changed there is a discharge but there is no actual inflammation that's why it is not vaginitis but it is bacterial vaginosis okay so what kind of discharge you expect a foul spelling dirty white discharge there will be no itching or very less itching foul spelling dirty white discharge in candidiasis there is a curdy white discharge curdy white discharge look like cottage cheese 
and it has having a intense pruritis because there is inflammation and and if we talk about uh, gardnerella vagina says sorry uh, trichomonas vagina allergies in this thing you will get frothy greenish yellowish discharge greenish yellowish discharge okay frothy greenish yellow discharge is seen and the look of the vagina is angry looking strawberry vagina and the name given is strawberry looking vagina so once you decide to investigate those discharges what you do you just do nothing you take those discharge put in on a slide and see in the microscope directly in the bacterial vaginosis you will find clue cells we will further discuss in the video what is clue cell in the candidal infection fungal infection you will find pseudo hypha and in trichomonas vaginalis you might find motile flagellate trichomonas organism itself okay now again a very biochemical test is also available that is whiff test that is amine test or 10% koh test what we do we take the discharge put 10% koh in into it and we see the smell if it is a fishy odor then it is a positive whiff test and that will be seen in bacterial vaginosis it is negative in candida and trichomonas vaginalis now the treatment treatment the antibiotic of choice is metronidazole in both bacterial vaginosis and trichomonal vaginalis and in uh, candidal infection the antifungal is used fluconazole okay so metronidazole clindamycin is the clindamycin cream is also available pessar is also available so this is how you need to see the each and every discharge now we will see some visuals of this discharge so if you see here this vagina we can see the vaginal uh, thing this is a cervix this is a cervical opening and this discharge is a white discharge this can be a normal discharge but if it is increased in quantity then it will be we can think that about bacterial vaginosis this kind of discharge for uh, cottage cheese like appearance it is seen in candidiasis or fungal infection of vagina this discharge you see is a greenish discharge and you can think about trichomonas vaginalis this is the strawberry looking vagina which is seen in trichomonas vaginalis so these are some uh, images now we will talk about whiff test in a different video in the next video thank you